You couldn't play it on a horn without using your hands. I can put this instrument into almost any key you like. <clears throat> I can make it into an E-flat horn, and I can play this uh, slow movement from the Mozart Second Concerto, and it goes like this. It's all right for a while, get that note. But I can if I go like this. And that was just mm. by doing that. Mm. So in other words, you've got a new range of music available to the player. There was a great, great, like an epidemic of, of wonderful virtuosos who came from Bohemia. Not only were they taming this, this, this harsh outdoor instrument, they were making music, chromatic music. How did they do it? It was just a length of tubing. It must have been one wonderful time. Mozart's music, written for the hand horn, remains one of the highlights of the horn player's repertoire. But the horn itself has continued to develop, extending its musical range by the use of valves. What we have here are three keys operated with the fingers and one operated with the thumb. That's all. What we can do is to play this as an instrument like these other ones. <coughs> Look, no hands. Played as a hand horn. I still have the same problems until I start using these. What I'm doing is to divert the tubing, in this case by pressing this button. This is like a little junction box, like a little tap, and the air goes down here, comes back and goes on its way. If I press this one down, it's into down this smaller loop. That adds on a a semitone, a half tone. This is double the length, a full tone. Listen. I can add them together. Add this one. So I can use them singly, add them together, and I'm getting this all this set of harmonics in different keys. The horn's still played in the same way. You still have to change your breath, pressure, change your, the tension of the lips to get the different notes. It doesn't actually make the instrument easier to play. And there's still nothing going on inside the instrument? No. Any more than there was with these very early horns? Nothing. What it does do is to enable the player to produce a full scale with all the notes sounding the same. It, <clears throat> far from making it simpler, it means that there are all these extra loops to collect condensation, you know. The traditional horn player is doing this. Ah, yes, and then what you don't know that he's going... Ah, there's a bit. Where is it? And he starts sort of searching around, taking out all these detachable bits. There's a bit. Congratulations. These come out not just for the convenience of emptying out the water, but again, these are tuning slides too. Each one can be adjusted in length. It won't put it down a half step, but it'll give you that minor adjustment you need. Robert Schumann was the first composer to exploit the new sounds of the valve horn.
What was there in that adagio that couldn't have been played on the old hand horn? Actually, you could fake most of it, but it's so chromatic, and there are so many notes that would be closed up, it would have just sounded ridiculous. Um, I mean, the opening one could get away with, perhaps. <laughs> that with one note but the low notes that uh, we hear in the middle would have just been a joke I mean <laughs> and then try to get this next one <laughs> no it, it just, it's, it's, it's just impractical can you show us how easy it is to get those low notes on the valve horn so we've uh, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> How comparatively easy it is for a skilled <laughs> player to get these low notes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 